Hello, so this is the obesity paradox. Part two, the purpose and power of fat. Chapter eight, cause and effect. The real killer is in obesity. So here I have a little definition of cause and effect. So cause, the reason for something, effect, what happened. Cause and effect explains why things happen. Single words that help identify cause and effect. So because, therefore, since, if, then, so, that, without, cause, effect, how, explain are all words that can be used when describing cause and effect. Okay, just as I was about to dive into writing this chapter in August 2013, the following headlines hit. Heavy burden, obesity may be even deadlier than thought. Obesity kills more Americans than previously thought. No more denial, obesity kills. And obesity's death toll may be even higher than thought. The news was published on a study recently published in the American Journal of Public Health, suggesting that obesity accounts for about 18% of all deaths in the U.S. Because, be, between the ages of four, 40 and 85, which is three times previous estimates. It was controversial to say the least. Not only did the study insinuate that the government has underpaid, laid the dangers of obesity, but it brought to light just how difficult it can be to calculate the cost of being overweight. This isn't the first time the government found itself in the center of a heated debate over how much obesity influences mortality. Obesity, obviously, the plot has thickened since the discovery that extra fat isn't always death nail. nail and may actually increase longevity, especially among those who already have a chronic condition that entails a higher mortality risk. It's a logical conundrum. If obesity is associated with heart disease and heart disease causes premature death, then how can we reconcile the fact that some forms of obesity can help a person with heart disease live longer? The impact of obesity has been prone to controversy ever since the CDC changed its estimation on obesity's overall death toll, and new research began to emerge, bringing into question not only the ramifications of obesity, but the definition of obesity itself. Then, when the 2013 paper hit, finding fewer deaths among those deemed overweight than those in the normal range, healthcare professionals scratched their heads again. To some clinicians, such findings seem shocking and implausible. Since excess fat had been strongly and indisputably associated with an untold number of health hazards. Let's go back to the 2013 study in the American Journal of Public Health. This study brings up a few interesting points. One thing is because younger individuals will be exposed longer to risk factors for obesity, they are even greater for becoming overweight or obese. And as a result, they are also at risk from suffering from related health problems and for a longer period of time. Kids growing up today are living in a totally different environment than even a generation ago. Obesity has become the norm and so has a culture that feeds obesity vicious cycle. Characterized by its supersized meals and drinks, environmental changes, and ubiquitous access to caloric foods, whose process contents can aggravate stable metabolic processes. To arrive at these new numbers on obesity's lethal toll, the researchers first broke the population down into generations or cohorts and looked at the effects of obesity on death from different age groups. Using these cohorts, they studied the result from a national health interview survey from 1986 through 2004. They found that roughly one in five deaths among the adults in the US was due to obesity. They also managed to determine that women seem to be more vulnerable than men to dying from obesity. If you look up the top 10 causes of death in this country, you won't find obesity on the list. Heart disease reigns in at number one, killing more than half a million people per year trailer closely by cancer. 
Now we can say that obesity could have played a role, however big or small, in some of these deaths, not to mention many others on the list. So this is obese of all causes of death is how many people died 2017, 2018 over here. And then we have heart disease, cancer, unintentional injuries, chronic lower respiratory disease, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, influenza and ammonia, kidney disease, and suicide. I was actually surprised suicide was in the top of the list, comparatively. We can contribute this conversation and we can continue this conversation in many ways. People who are overweight or obese are far more likely than thinner people to have any number of diseases, but that being fatter not necessarily means being less fit or less healthy. We have fit but fat people and the physically thin but metabolically obese. We know that exercise and fitness can protect you from death and disease regardless of weight. So it says exercise and fitness. So we're saying if you're fat and fit. So that's why they're saying that fat is not necessarily always the bad guy. So this shows the metabolic syndrome and things that can be affected with metabolic syndrome. Mm -hmm. Cause and effect. If I were to ask you if junk food causes obesity in kids, could you answer a steadfast yes or no? By now you know not to jump to conclusions. It is possible to eat some junk food without causing obesity, but you could say that there is a correlation between junk food and obesity. Correlation does not imply causation. It's a phrase used in science to emphasize that correlation between two variables does not necessarily mean that one directly causes the other. In a wide city example, Numerous studies once showed that women who were taking hormone replacement therapy had a lower incidence of coronary heart disease. This led doctors to suggest that hormone replacement therapy protected against heart disease. But randomized controlled trials revealed something totally different. Hormone replacement therapy caused a small but statistical significant increase in the risk of heart disease. This prompted scientists to reconsider their thinking. And take another look at the earlier data. They found that women in the first study were from a higher socioeconomic group. This means that women in the first study were more likely to have better than average diets, better exercise habits, and receive better medical care. One or two weak studies can rapidly become conventional wisdom. And we can find ourselves making very broad, unstantiated claims that reflect faults, cause, and effect relationships. Perhaps the best way to see how the conversation about obesity is often skewed by misconception about causation and correlation is to consider one of the most intriguing outliers of the obesity ep epidemic. The fact that not all obese people get diabetes and not all diabetics are obese means something else is going on. I have a video on the next slide that talks about diabetes itself. There are two main types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. They're different conditions, but they're both serious. There are some other rarer types of diabetes too. What all types of diabetes have in common is that they cause people to have too much glucose in their blood. But we all need some glucose. It's what gives us our energy. We get glucose when our bodies break down the carbohydrates that we eat or drink, and that glucose is released into our blood. We also need a hormone called insulin. It's made by our pancreas, and it's insulin that allows the glucose in our blood to enter our cells and fuel our bodies. If you don't have diabetes, your pancreas senses when glucose has entered your bloodstream and releases the right amount of insulin so the glucose can get into your cells. But if you have diabetes, this system doesn't work. When you've got type 1 diabetes, you can't make any insulin at all. If you've got type 2 diabetes, it's a bit different. The insulin you make either can't work effectively or you can't produce enough of it. In both types of diabetes, because glucose can't get into your cells, it begins to build up in your blood. And too much glucose in your blood causes a lot of different problems. 
To begin with, it leads to diabetes symptoms, like having to wee a lot, being incredibly thirsty and feeling very tired. You may also lose weight, get infections like thrush, or suffer from slow healing wounds. Over a long period of time, high glucose levels in your blood can seriously damage your heart, your eyes, your feet and your kidneys. These are known as the complications of diabetes. But with the right treatment and care, people can live a healthy life. And there's much less risk that someone will experience these complications. If you've got diabetes, you can find lots of information and support about living with it using our website and helpline. As well as campaigning for everyone with diabetes to get the right care, Diabetes UK fund research into all types of diabetes so we can develop new treatments and one day find a cure. You can find out more about type 1 and type 2 diabetes and how they're treated in our next videos.